What is going on guys, it's David here and I'm super stoked because today uh, I'm gonna be trying something new. Uh, we are going to be doing a sort of like live copper drop segment. Uh, just a couple of items that uh, I thought I just would pick out and just kind of give my thoughts and share with you guys. So uh, if you guys are ready and up for it, we're just gonna go ahead and dive into this. All right guys, so the first item uh, that uh, we need to pick up and I think a lot of this is kind of uh, dependent on the fact that we are in this like quarantine COVID-19 situation. So hopefully you guys are staying safe, staying in your house, but as well getting your fitness on. Um, I just moved into a new place. So I actually do not have a lot of options when it comes to training. So the last five weeks, four weeks, I've been doing a uh, the One Punch Man uh, workout. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, you will see all my posts. Um, that's at Black Samson. Um, but I need some equipment. Um, I've been using my uh, uh, Reebok training backpack, which is like my gym bag, um, and I've been putting my weight vest in there. But uh, it doesn't really, it's not very uh, optimal for a lot of different workouts that I wanna do. So one of the first things that I actually do need to buy is a kettlebell. Um, and today we are looking at the Rogue kettlebells. Um, Rogue is a very tried and true brand for all of my CrossFitters out there. And I think kettlebells are just a very uh, versatile piece of equipment. There's a lot of different things that you can do with kettlebells. You could do overhead presses, you could do stabilized or inverted uh, overhead presses with the kettlebell. So sometimes what I'll do uh, is flip the kettlebell upside down um, and do presses that way with a moderate weight. Uh, the cool thing about that is you'll be able to kind of like work certain muscles that, that you don't typically work um, or uh, just kind of tax your muscles a little bit more than, than typical. So um, that's why I really like kettlebells. You could do, you know, one arm snatches, you could do cleans, a lot of different things. You could do floor presses, you could do deadlifts. So um, they have a lot of options here, but I think with everything that's going on, um, a lot of the options are, are pretty much sold out except for these heavy ones. So I may just end up like buying this super heavy one uh, just so that I can also kind of like use it for um, presses. So I could do like um, uh, diamond presses, kind of like diamond push-ups, um, as well as like heavy uh, deadlifts and RDLs and things of that nature. So um, that's kind of like my first item that I'm looking at with regards to uh, stuff that you should pick up, that I think you should pick up. So pick it up right now, click the link in my description. All right, so the next item on our list of things that I really want to pick up and that I need to pick up uh, are the Nike Romaleo 4s. Uh, these look kind of dope. Um, I've been using my Romaleo 3s quite a bit. Uh, previously, I was using the Reebok Legacy Lifters. Um, I actually really, really like those because of uh, just the overall construction of the shoe. Uh, it's very heavy, which I like. It's almost like you're wearing like steel toe boots. Um, but for me, I feel really stabilized. Um, the Romaleo 4s look a lot more stabilized than um, the 4s or the 3s. Um, and that's one of the things that I like. The toe box is one of the things um, that looks really nice. It's got a wide sort of like base to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's just like a good looking shoe. The one thing that I don't like about the Romaleo 4s is the heels. Um, and I think just in general with Nike shoes, they tend to be a little bit more slimmer. Um, I like having a wider shoe, especially at the toe box. It's, it's a big thing for me, uh, hence why I've been using the um, uh, Legacy lifters for lifting for, for, a year, for a couple, a year and a half, I think it, it's been. Um, and then, you know, even for just like training shoes, you guys all know that I'm not a big Reebok guy. I don't like Reebok. Uh, I just think they change things to like their shoes aren't very consistent. Um, but the toe box on the Roma and the Reebok Nano 8s, um, I really, really like those. Um, and so I'm hoping that the toe boxes on the Romaleo 4s are going to be very similar to uh, the wider toe box. Um, I think I would assume that it might be even similar to the uh, the Metcon 5, um, which I have a pair of those. I haven't I haven't trained in them yet. I need to pull those out. But um, yeah, I really like these shoes. I think the construction on them looks pretty dope. Um, I think 
the silhouette is, yeah, it's just, I, I think in my opinion, I think it's a good looking shoe. Um, I'm definitely gonna pick these up. Um, it is a little bit more pricier and, and that's the thing with weightlifting shoes in general. It's like, you don't really need to purchase weightlifting shoes very often. And I've only used my Romaleo 3s for, I don't know, a few months now. So, um, because I keep one pair of lifters at the gym and then I have one pair of lifters in my car uh, if I, for some reason, have to lift somewhere else. But um, I would be definitely interested in checking these shoes out. So, uh, that's my sort of take on these. I think, yeah, I think overall, I think this is the best silhouette yet. And I also like how they have the double straps, uh, which isn't on the Romaleo 3. Uh, so that's something that's different um, between the two shoes. But um, honestly, I, I, to be quite honest, this is a shoe I don't really have too much details on. Um, I haven't been uh, super, super focused on um, shoes as much, uh, at least within the training world. But I'm gonna check these out. You guys should probably check these out. Um, they got some dope colorways too. Um, that's the thing about it. Um, I think there's some really good colorways. I hope there's gonna be more good colorways. Um, I think the Romelia 3 had some really good colorways as well. Um, the thing that I didn't like about the Legacy Lifters is that there wasn't a lot of versatile colorways. That's something that I would prefer. Uh, I know a lot of people out there like very eccentric colors. I like simple stuff, black, white, red. Um, even this black with orange strap is pretty nice, uh, but that's just me. Compare this to the Nike Free Metcon. Uh, I, I'm just gonna hop into the shoe just because I've already talked about it. This shoe does not look good. Um, I don't plan on, like, I take, that, I take that back. I will purchase this shoe just to test it out and check out what it's like. I haven't yet, but I don't like this shoe just because it's like, it's almost like a boot camp shoe, uh, which I think that's kind of like the whole, that was the whole idea of the Nike Free. Uh, Nike Free Metcon in general, but the way that this one is constructed, it feels a lot less um, built for CrossFitters and just built for people that do like Barry's Bootcamp, which I don't like Barry's Bootcamp, <laughs> to be quite honest. I don't think that it's the most safest um, uh, activity for people that are new to the world of fitness, but I mean, there's a lot of things that I think that are missing from the shoe. Uh, there's no real rope climb protection, um, I don't really know what this shoe is really built for anymore. Um, that's just my opinion. But uh, if I was only able to purchase one or the other, the Nike Romaleo 4 or the Nike Free Metcon 3, I would be picking the Nike Romaleo 4, um, especially um, if you've never purchased a cross or a weightlifting shoe. Uh, if you're a CrossFitter, I think all CrossFitters should have a pair of weightlifting shoes. It's like showing up to a uh, baseball game without a glove um, or a beer softball league, beer softball league, softball beer league uh, without a glove, um, it's stupid. Uh, why would you not clean without having assistance? Um, I think there's a lot of benefits. You'll be able to, to be able to hit positions in your in movements that you don't typically hit with uh, when you're just wearing like uh, Metcons or Nanos. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's, it holds very true. I know there are some weird uh, scenarios out there where people are just super hyper mobile, but I think for most people, I think it would benefit them to have a good pair of lifters. So if you're gonna pick either of the two, I would say go for the Nike Romaleo fours. But as we're still on this topic of shoes, the Reebok Nano X is also coming out. Uh, this is a shoe that I'm actually kind of interested in. Um, the only reason why I say that is because I would really actually like the upper on this shoe. Um, the interesting about this thing though is that I definitely do think that Reebok uh, with the whole kind of like falling out of CrossFit and Reebok, um, they are kind of tailoring this shoe to be a little bit more for the masses or branding it more for the masses as opposed to being like a CrossFit centric shoe. But I think the way that the shoe looks is definitely dope from the upper standpoint. Again, it still has the same um, uh, outsole as the uh, Nano 9s, which I'm not a huge fan of. I purchased a pair of the Nano 9s all black colorway. Um, I haven't been too impressed with the shoe. 
Um, I actually don't, I, I, I don't wear it very often. And, and the only reason why I don't is because I think the outsole is a little bit too stiff um, as compared to the eight. I love the, oh, we got that weird autofocus action, but um, I love the outsole on the eight. The outsole on the eight is pretty dope. Um, it was very comfortable. I think it was good for running. Wasn't the great for lifting, but it was very forgiving, which I liked. The, the, nine, the Nano nines don't have a great or very forgiving um, outsole. And so, or I, excuse me, not outsole, midsole. So um, that's my biggest thing is, uh, I really hope that this shoe has a little bit more of a forgiving uh, midsole. Um, it looks like that might be the, the case. I don't know, who knows what that'll be like, but um, you know, the flexibility of the nine, uh, I would assume that this is gonna have a lot of the same profiles except for some you know, minor enhancements uh, with uh, the upper, which is it seems that is the case here. Um, and then, um, yeah, who knows what this is, was really gonna wear test like. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think this initial colorway that they're offering looks very good, uh, but who knows? Uh, I don't, I, I kind of wish it still had those like CrossFit sort of like um, insignias on it. But again, this is the new world that we're in uh, where any, I think any shoes now can be worn at the CrossFit Games. Uh, Reebok is not the title sponsor. <clears throat> now some more home gym goodness. Um, another item that I need to pick up or I wanted to pick up is the, is a um, plate carrier. Um, the, the weight vest that I have is not a very good one. It's one of those like Dick Sporting Goods um, sand filled ones. And so it moves around a lot. It's got all these pockets uh, for all the different uh, bags of sand. Um, and so it's not built very well to last. Uh, the one I've been looking at lately is the Condor Sentry Plate Carrier. Um, it's a pretty affordable price. Uh, the plate carrier itself is about 50 bucks. Um, and then the weight uh, that you wanna add uh, per pair doesn't seem too outrageous either. Uh, I mean, for a pair of uh, 13 uh, pound uh, weights, uh, plates uh, for the, the vest is about 82 bucks. Uh, so, I mean, you're looking at what? Uh, let me get my calculator out because I don't know how to do math off the top of my head. So you're looking at 133 bucks for about uh, what, 26, um, 27 pounds uh, plus a plate carrier. Um, and then they also, you can order patches too that fit this as well. Um, it's not like the 511, or the, is it, yeah, 511 tactical one. Um, and there are some kind of like average reviews for this product, but it seems like a lot of people um, for the most part like this weight vest. So I think this is the weight vest that I'm gonna go for, um, especially again with Murph coming right, right around the corner. Um, I think it's just good to have a weight vest, um, especially now that we're in quarantine. I've been using my weight vest a lot. I probably use my weight vest about two to three days per week. Uh, since I don't have any other sort of um, um, uh, weights or, or, or dumbbells or kettlebells or anything like that. So the only way that I can get that extra resistance is using my weight vest. So I think this is the one that I'm gonna go to, go with. Um, it's a very good price. It's got 4.6 uh, stars on Rogue. It's got 276 reviews. So I think this is gonna be a, a good choice. And I think down the road, if I wanna spend more, um, hopefully this will last me quite some time and then down the road, if I really wanna spend more, um, or if I just wanna test out this, the new uh, 511 Tactical uh, Vest, um, you know, I can go down that route. And the next thing that I really wanna pick up is the Whoop Band. Um, this is a pretty cool uh, fitness tracker. Um, it is waterproof um, and it tracks 24 seven, it's continuous tracking. It analyzes your sleep, uh, strain, um, all everything that you would literally want to track. Um, your recovery, everything like that. Um, it looks pretty cool. It's got a lot of cool uh, options. So if I click join now, it's about $30, which is kind of misleading because that's not the actual price. Um, but they've got a lot of cool bands, um, not to the extent as like the Apple Watch, and it's not as versatile as the Apple Watch, but I think in terms of if you really wanna get the metrics 
for from a training perspective, this might be a little bit better in that regards, but um, they've got a lot of cool options for bands, which is nice. You get it. Oh, so that's another cool thing too, is you have an extra battery that you could utilize for tracking um, that you could pay for, which you don't get with the uh, uh, Apple Watch. So with this, maybe you, oh, why do we, we got some crazy action going on. Um, so with the Apple Watch, you're not gonna necessarily get the ability to kind of like swap out batteries, but with this, you got that. So that's kind of cool, which I think is definitely worth it. I know for me right now, I have the Series Zero Apple Watch, and this thing, it dies before the end of the day. I would say I go to work, when I'm done with work, I'm at like, 15, 20%, and then if I do a track a workout, it kills my batteries. So I usually have to charge it while I'm at work. This would save me the trouble and the hassle of needing to charge my watch all the time. So uh, bands are, are not too priced, but here's the kicker. Um, so this watch or this fitness tracker is not just $30. Um, I believe you can get a discount where the actual band itself is free and then you just pay for the membership. Um, or if I'm not mistaken, it's this $30 a month. So let's see, let's go ahead and choose this. But before I choose this, so you got different plans that you could choose. You could either pay 30 bucks a month, you could pay 24 and you could pay 18, depending on um, the, uh, the length of time that you purchase it or you pay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this. Um, I, I guess I understand the idea is that like you're paying for the service and you're paying for the platform, you're paying for the updates that come with the application. But I don't think at the end of the day um, that I would, uh, I just, I don't think it's worth like, if I'm gonna buy, pay for this versus an Apple Watch. So you could pay 30 bucks a month uh, you could pay everything all at once. So $288 um, for the mid tier or the 12 month membership and then eight, uh, 324 for the 18 month membership. At that point, I would honestly just buy the Apple Watch. From there, I would have the opportunity to then um, uh, pay for Apple Care. So then I get even more support. Um, Apple support is already as stellar. Um, and I have AirPods, so I can save music to my watch. Um, I have my AirPods, I can leave my phone at home, you connect my AirPods to my watch, um, listen to music while I'm working out, or podcasts where I'm working out, and I can track, and I have notifications as needed, and I can integrate other fitness apps. So I think this is a cool idea, but in the, at the end of the day, I think, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think paying um, the monthly fee or essentially kind of like the value that you're getting, I don't think it's really fully there when you compare it to everything that you get with an Apple Watch, but I think it's a cool concept. I definitely think it's, it's something that's worth trying just from all the different metrics um, that you can get. Um, kind of going back here to the uh, page, um, there's just a lot of different things that you can get, daily analytics, um, I guess there's communities that you can join. Um, you can create custom teams. There's a lot of cool things here, but I think ultimately um, I'm gonna try it, but um, I think the Apple Watch is a better value at the end of the day. That's just my opinion. Uh, so is this a cop? Is this a drop? Um, we'll find out at the end. I'm gonna do a quick summary for you guys. The last thing I definitely do wanna pick up um, is the key shorts from uh, Strike Movement. They've got some cool stuff. Honestly, I think Strike Movement is probably one of the very few more stylish sort of like fitness brands um, or minim minimally stylist fitness brands. Um, when you look at brands like even, for example, like Lululemon, um, I love Lululemon. I love a lot of the, the stuff that they put together, but um, I like Strike Movement as well. I think their clothing looks pretty dope. Um, their shoes, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of. Um, I did a video on their shoes previously. Um, the first pair of shoes, the um, Chill Pills, uh, which are like their running shoe, um, the outsoles uh, fell apart within like less than 30 days. I think it was like two weeks um, and it just started to become unglued. Um, and then they actually sent me a pair of the, um, I think it's the Interval. Um, and those actually also started to come unglued. 
Um, and you know, again, this is a very small brand. So, you know, with regards to the quality of their products, um, there might be a higher instance of things that kind of fall apart. And I think that's just the, the risk that you take with a smaller brand like this. But I think some of their other stuff is pretty dope. Like their key shorts um, look really, really good. Um, the cool thing about these shorts that I like is that, <coughs> that's not Corona. The cool things that I like about these, the colors are pretty dope. They have Phantom, which is black, and then they have Burnt Olive, uh, but these are also swim ready. And I really like training in uh, board shorts. I sweat a lot. So being able to have um, uh, clothes that wick uh, and they're quick drying um, is in my benefit. So um, I think these are pretty dope. The price is a little high up there when you look at shorts. Uh, but again, I think you, and this is kind of contradictory, but you know, quality over quantity, I'd rather have a few good, um, well put together items that are a little bit more expensive that are gonna last me a very long time as opposed to having to buy like Target shorts all the time. Um, so I do have a few pairs of Lululemon shorts that are really, really comfortable. Um, I would imagine that their stuff is, I would hope that their stuff is a good quality because I mean, I think with their shoes, the materials that they use are pretty good like quality in terms of like the fabrics, um, but uh, you know, there are some other shortcomings there, but um, these, these shorts look pretty dope, I think in general. Um, they have a six and three fourths quarter inch stream. So they're a little bit shorter, which I also kind of like because it's like a retro swimwear vibe. Um, you've got elastic waistband with a draw cord. Um, you've got a zip pocket, which is also kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, overall this style is pretty dope. Um, it's made in Canada. I mean, it's not USA, uh, but the zippered pocket looks pretty dope. Yeah, th I think this would be a good pair of shorts to run in. Uh, I think this would be a good pair of shorts to train in. And um, yeah, I think it's just, just overall pretty dope. And that's, that's, that's it, that's it guys. Those are the things I wanna pick up. Um, just kind of in summary, uh, cop or drop, obviously the rogue kettlebells, I think especially for right now, as we are in um, quarantine stay at home orders, the rogue kettlebells are definitely a cop. Uh, Romaleo fours uh, that, that came out recently. These are also, I would say definitely a cop, depending on your situation. If you need a pair of lifting shoes, obviously right now, um, if you don't have a home gym, you're not gonna be lifting, but it's nice to be prepared for when you know gyms do open back up. I heard uh, pretty soon uh, administration is gonna try to get gyms to open back up early, so who knows? Um, so I think these are definitely a, a cop. Nano X, um, I'm not a huge Reebok guy, but I will say that the Nano X are definitely a cop from a looks perspective. Uh, this initial colorway is really dope. Um, I hope that the midsoles are a lot more comfortable than the nines, but we'll see. Uh, these come out May 5th, so definitely check your uh, check out uh, reebok.com slash US Nano. The link will be in, in, in the description. Condor Century Plate. Uh, I think this is definitely a cop as well. It's very affordable uh, for what you need. Uh, patches that you would want are also not too bad priced. Five bucks for regular uh, nylon fabric patches and then 10, 9.50, 10 bucks uh, for leather patches. Um, they work with all the Rogue patches as well as they work with the Rogue uh, uh, weight plates. So there you go with that. Um, so that is definitely a cop. The Whoop Band, I really like it, but I think for the average person, this is not a cop, this is a drop. Um, I think for the price, you're definitely better off buying a uh, Apple Watch as opposed to the Whoop Band. But again, I always advocate, try something for yourself if you want those super detailed uh, analytics and not have as uh, much of a um, uh, versatile watch like the Apple Watch, then go for it. But I think for the average person, it's not worth the monthly payment um, and the Apple Watch is a better value. Last, or not last, second to last, uh, the key short, I think these are definitely a cop, especially if you're a guy. Uh, summer's coming around the corner. Um, these are uh, quick dry fabric. Right now, uh, if you donate 30, if you donate $10, you get 30% off. So you get a good deal on these shorts um, and colorways are, are very versatile for wh whatever you wear when you train. Um, and they're moisture wicking, which is the biggest thing. I love moisture wicking shorts. Board shorts are my favorite. So definitely go ahead and check these out. 
The Nike Free Metcom 3, I already did a video on these, but these are a drop. I don't think you should buy these. I don't think anybody should buy these unless you are doing Barry's boot camp. If that's your thing, go for it. Um, but I'm gonna say for the average person, don't waste your time on this shoe. Um, I don't think um, if, if you are a CrossFitter, this is going to be a shoe that you're gonna be utilizing very often. Um, I would imagine that the outsoles are probably going to shred pretty quickly uh, when using uh, these for rope climbs. I know when I had my Metcon, my Metcon Free Ones, um, I tried doing rope climbs and the very first day I did rope climbs in those shoes, uh, they shredded. So I would imagine that the same thing's gonna happen for these. That's just my opinion. Uh, but uh, when I do release a wear test for this video, um, I'll give you guys more insight in regards to how I feel about that. So that's gonna be it for this video. It's a very long video. I think it's like 20, 30 minutes, but we are in quarantine. So if you have time to watch this video, please do. Um, because I got a lot of time. I'm gonna be cranking out some more videos for you guys um, as I have the time, even though I am working from home. We'll see how that works. Guys, I'm not gonna waste any more time. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so that I know I'm creating the kind of content that you guys wanna see. And with that, guys, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. This is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.